Amen. Good evening and welcome to service this evening. Uh, by way of announcements, we don't want to forget prayer meeting is here on Monday nights at 7 p.m. So uh, participate if you can. Also, uh, the Harvest Festival is coming up. That's going to be this coming Saturday, November 6th from uh, 4 to 8 p.m. here at the church. If you would like to volunteer to help with the game or station, please sign up in the uh, foyer out there at the main entrance. Uh, for the event, we'll need lots of candy, so still bring candy and everything. Also, during that event, we'll be having a chili cook-off. Um, that's going to be also November the 6th at the Harvest Festival. So if you make a good pot of chili, sign up out there, and uh, we'll have a nice contest and have, have good fun. And please see uh, Brother Zach Woolard if you have any questions about that. Uh, Sister Ann told us this morning about the um, the singing, the Jason Crabb singing. That's next uh, Sunday evening or Sunday evening the 14th, Sunday after next, at 7 p.m. at the uh, Snow Branch Church. So see her if you would like to get tickets for that. And um, she will promote the ladies' ministry again. And also we'll be starting, children will be beginning practicing for the Christmas program. So please... Uh, the children's workers will be getting parents will be getting with you parents to let you know the schedules and if you would like your children and grandchildren to be involved please make sure they are here for practices and if you are missing a dish maybe during the uh the funerals we've had lately if you've uh left the dish out here those are in the copy room so stop by and check and make sure not on yours okay so i'm gonna i'm um, just put in a little extra plug if you will for the ladies meeting it's on the 18th at seven o'clock and I was speaking to someone just a little bit ago as we said this morning you know our, our the, the theme is this is me and we what we were trying to do is to you know just get to know each other you know we, we're fitly formed together and put together you know we're the body of Christ but there's oftentimes something we don't know about each other it might be um, and it is not a you know, a ticket to get in. So you can. we still want you to come to the meeting if you're not comfortable or you don't feel like you have something to share. But if you have a talent, a hobby, something you want to tell us that you did when you were younger or something that, you know, is special to you or that is a special part of your life that maybe we don't know about you, we, it's just a time for us to learn more about each other and to share. We also want you to bring a picture or ahead of time provide it to either myself or Sister Kim a picture of you when in your, um, shall we say, youth. <laughs> Depends on how you look at that. We're getting seasoned and older, some of us, but we don't want it to be a giveaway. It's going to be for a fun time, a game we're going to do and trying to guess who's who. But, again, the theme is This Is Me. We'd love to see you there. If you have any other questions, please see Sister Kim or me. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we don't have any prayer requests written down tonight, so... Uh, do you have a prayer request you'd like to give by speaking at this time anywhere in the building? Say that one more time. I missed that. Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Anybody uplifted hand? God knows the need. Yes. Stand with us. We'll take these needs to God in prayer and faith, believing. Um, I think every time we pray, if we can just remember, we don't do this out of ceremony. We don't do it out of form. But we believe that God is going to change something. He's going to change people when we pray. And uh, seeing Brother Murphy's situation just turn around, it just helps us to increase our faith and know that we have a God who cares. And uh, I just believe when we go to him in prayer and take the needs to him, I'm looking, I'm expecting something to change. I'm expecting needs to be met. Um, and I believe this is the way we should pray. Holy God, we come before you tonight. Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be in your house. Dear God, we stand here and we profess that we need you. God, we need you in this service. God, we just pray for the needs that we're giving in tonight, Father. Oh, God, you know the, the need of each and every one, Father. God, these that need a, a 
touch in their life spiritually, physically, emotionally, God. Father, you know the needs. God, we just bring them to you in faith believing. Dear God, knowing there's nothing too hard for you, God, there's nothing too ins insignificant for you. God, if it affects us, it affects you. And dear God, you know about it. You care about it. And dear God, I just pray tonight, Father, for all these hands that were raised. Dear God, we know that that represents uh, many homes, many people, many situations. But God, you're the God with uh, all knowledge, all knowing, Father, all powerful. God, we just bring these needs to you tonight, Father, in faith believing. God, we thank you for answering our prayers, for hearing our cries. God, we thank you for shedding your uh, mercy and your grace upon us, Father, and overshadowing us with that. Dear God, for those so many times when we could have walked out of your will, when we could have uh, walked away from uh, where we need to be, but God, yet you wooed us back to you, Father. You wooed us into the to the area that we need to be. And dear God, I just pray tonight, Father, for this service. God, we thank you for those that are here tonight, those that can't be here for various reasons. God, we pray that you would be with them. But God, we pray for an anointing in this house tonight. Dear God, that we will know you, Father. We will see you. God, that we will see your glory in this service tonight. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we ask amen and amen. Please remain standing and worship with us inside.
Amen. Yes. You might be seated. Go how the God bless their soul. Then they remember way back then, such a long, long time ago. Well, let me tell you, friend, somehow God did then He can do right now. There's more, there's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more, there's a whole lot more. Where God can do that he has already done. There's more of his blessing, more of his love, more of his power from heaven above. There's more, there's, more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more that my God can do that he has already done. More of his love, more of his power from heaven above. There's more, there's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more, there's more of his love, more of his power from heaven above. There's more, there's more, there's a whole lot more. There's more, there's a whole lot more. There's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe tonight that the best is yet to come? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only in heaven, but I'm looking for something great to happen here. Oh, yeah. I believe that we're going to have a last day's revival. Yes. And we're, going to, we're not going to just talk about one miracle happening occasionally or I believe we want to see them all the time because I believe God is going to do the miraculous. God is going to change this world, but he's going to do it his way. He's not going to do it the way he, we've thought about it. We're not going to have revival the way we think we're going to have it. We're going to do it God's way. And I'm looking forward to that, and I believe the best is yet to come. So I want you to stand up with us tonight and help us sing this and let God have his way. Well, some folks talk about long ago How that God blessed their soul Do you remember that? Hallelujah Saying they remember way back then Such a long, long time ago Well, let me tell you Friends, somehow what God did then, He can do right now. There's more, there's, more, there's, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more, there's, there's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's more that my God can do than He has already done. There's more of His blessings, more of His love. More of his power from heaven above. There's more, there's a whole lot more where that came from. There's more, there's 
morning you can sit down and I know we're getting ready to have the offering you can go ahead I just feel like telling this I just was thinking today as uh, the day has progressed of some goals I'd set financially and you know I'm approaching retirement age and that kind of thing and I was thinking of some things that paid for this last year and uh, last week my son came to help my daughter move and I gave him some money and different things and I got to counting and when I say that, <laughs> it's not a whole lot to count, but, but I was just totaling up, you know, th what God had blessed me to put aside and this kind of thing. And I got to thinking about that widow woman, you know, when God told her, go get those vessels. I don't know how he does it, but somehow God makes a way out of no way. And you can think things should be deplenishing and God is replenishing. You know, sometimes we just forget to praise him. And I just was thinking about that lady. And she kept pouring and the oil kept coming. She kept pouring and the oil kept coming. And finally she said to the boys, you know, bring me another vessel. And they said, we've, we've gathered everything. <laughs> you know, we've got everybody's vessels and all of them are full. I just want to praise the Lord that he is a replenishing God. There's plenty more where that came from. Things may look like you're digging out of the bottom of the barrel sometimes. But I'm grateful that every time you go back, he's made a way. He's always made a provision. He is Jehovah Jireh, and I am grateful tonight that he is my provider. <laughs> we sing, I am sometimes. He is whatever you need. He's like a, a blank check. I mean, what do you need, my child? Just let me know. And, you know, and he's so willing and able and ready to help us and bless us and take care of us. I just wanted to share that. Hope it blessed somebody. It blesses me to think about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Awesome testimony. If you will, let's stand. Praise God. I don't need to say any more than that. Praise God. I know we all have a testimony of how God has brought us through and how God has kept us. You know, the other night I was coming home from Jessica's house and hit a deer and wrecked my old car, and it's, it's pretty much total, but... I said, like the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, but he's going to provide another one, you know. Amen. He's, he's a way maker. He works it out. Even when we don't see a way, he does it. He's done it my whole life, and I'm expecting him to continue to do it till he calls me home. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord God, that you are our provider, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you, Jesus, that you know everything that we have need of, Lord God. And all we has to, have to do is ask, Lord God. So I ask you tonight, Lord God, to bless this people, Lord. Each and every need, Lord God, is represented here tonight, Lord God. Show them your glory, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you do keep us, Lord God, and you do make a way, Lord God. Bless this offering, Lord God. Let it bless your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. You can come here.
Amen. That's what we're going to say one day. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. Hallelujah. Brother Denny's going to come around and bless our hearts tonight in song. Love you guys. We, um, that's a good way to start. Um, Brother Craig and I was talking earlier, and it uh, a thought came to my head um, about we were talking about being led by the Spirit and everything, and the the thought was, how does God talk to you? You know, how does He communicate with you how does he tell you what he wants there's only a few ways for us being very limited people humans that he can deal with that one is the heart of course of which he, only he can talk to uh, nobody else not even uh, no, no other power on earth can talk to the heart human heart but god yeah, but that's usually not the way he does it because it doesn't communicate a clear thought. It's more of an impression. But he usually talks to people through their minds. If they'll listen. If they'll listen, he talks to them through their minds. And that's the way he, he wants to talk to us and communicate through us, to impress our mind with thoughts of what his will is. But uh, if we don't listen... If we don't hear that, then the last opportun the last option he has is through this. It's through the external. It's through the out your environment. It's what he gives. It's it's the only way he left he has to talk to you, to communicate with you. And it's generally not a good thing because the human nature is such that if he blesses you, you're thinking, well, I'm on the right track. So usually when he talks to people, when it comes down to the point we quit listening, what he has to do is talk to us through an external, which is not good. And uh, I, I said one time that I'd just share what God lays on my heart, what I feel like he was to share, wants me to share, there's a parable about uh, that I, that he has laid on my heart. It's a parable about this this king. It was a king a ruler over the whole earth, and he had this uh, he had power over the whole earth. And this king had many children, many many children, and the children are out on the ocean. And they were out there, and because they were foolish children, they let the boat sink. This boat sank, and all these his children were stranded in the water, and they were clinging to different things, different objects and different uh, items that they found around to try to stay afloat and to keep, keep afloat and keep from drowning. So the king became aware of this, and he sent out a boat, a, a rescue boat, and he said, I'll send out this rescue boat. And this boat I'll st will be able to go around and get my children. So he sent the boat out, and some of the children got into the boat. And they helped a few of the other children into the boat. But after a while, they got a little tired of it. They got complacent. Some of them fell asleep. Some of them decided that they had better things to do and they just relaxed in the boat because it turned out to be a good day. And some of them didn't like the idea of reaching down into the water again and helping somebody else out of the water. And the king found out about that. And he got very, very angry. And he caused a great wind to come across the children in the boats. And he said, he said that 
unless all my children are safe. You can't count any of them as being safe. And he was angry with the children. Now, I don't know how that parable ends, but I do know that God has a way of speaking to us to get our attention. And if we don't heed the last way he speaks to us, then he lets us go, just like the, just like a mother eagle will, will let her eaglet go when it's trying to teach it to fly. Um, I would say that this uh, this song that I'm about to sing, uh, I, usually I don't pay much attention about the names, but this one is turned out to be important to me. It's called The Awakening. I have walked every day in the blessings you have made. I was a parched and thirsty soul. I drank deep, but I still miss Like a child not yet grown, I took all the love you've shown. My thinking won't steal more. I come to with the heart that is broken for these words have been spoken. Yes, I come to seeking a way that I may repay you for the things you do. And if I'm trying here to fulfill your desires, yes, I ask So many things I've left undone So much of you I'm not known Cause when I looked into your eyes All I could see was your love for me And now that comes down to this Of all the things I have missed when I looked at you, dear Lord, I should have said that you had me. Now I come to you with a heart that is broken, for these words have been spoken. Yes, I come to seeking my way that I may repay you for the things you do. Set me on fire to fulfill your desire. This I do. Amen. If you'll stand tonight, this is a little course that we've sung many times, but it has a powerful, 
powerful meaning. I don't know about you, but I think many times where would I be without the Lord? I was lost and broken. And like all of us, needed a Savior many years ago. But where would I be today had I not given my life to Him? I'm just so thankful tonight for the grace of God. Let's sing together and worship Him. worship just a moment more before we get into the word tonight. Father, we bless you. Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit, Lord, to minister, to move amongst your people, Lord God. Lord, something transformative will take place amongst each and every one of us, Lord. God, touch us in our deepest place, Lord God, in our deepest need tonight, Lord God. Minister, Lord, uh, throughout this service, through the preaching, the altar time, Lord God. You are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, would you remain standing in Matthew's Gospel, the 25th chapter. We're going to read verse 40, then I'll go back and read the rest of it as you, but when you get ready to be seated. Matthew 25. You know, I love all this beautiful singing and worshiping the Lord and worshiping the Lord and giving Him glory and honor in His house. I don't ever want to get go through the motions of that. Do you, church? Just want to just do our best and worship the Lord. And oh, I like the last verse of that last little message of that song, brother. Then he was saying, I don't remember exactly, but my let my life be all about you, Lord. Let my life be about you. Matthew 25. Let's read verse 40. Just one verse of scripture, and then I'll read the rest of it. 
The Bible said, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. I want to preach for a little while tonight on cooperation in the kingdom. Would you bow your head and pray with me and for me tonight? Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything that has taken place, Lord. We never want to take for granted your presence, Lord. We don't ever want to go through a motion, a form, a fashion, a religious tradition and call it worship because your word tells us that you seek those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. So tonight, Lord, we believe that's what we're doing. And our hope and our prayer, Lord, tonight, God, now that you will anoint me, Lord, to minister the word of God, Lord, let the truths of God's word be declared. Lord, let the people of God embrace truth. Let them receive truth. Lord, let them act on that truth, Lord God. We'll thank you, God, for all that's accomplished. And everybody said amen and amen. You can go ahead and be seated. And I'm going to turn your attention to verse 34. Many of us uh, are very familiar with this passage of Scripture, and it speaks uh, of, I believe, is what I'm preaching on, of cooperating in the kingdom of God. And the thought that I want to leave you with tonight as you uh, prepare your hearts to receive and to uh, embrace the word of the living God tonight is that we have an obligation to cooperate in the kingdom of God with what God is doing. Amen. We have an obligation. It is not an. It is not a request from God. It's not a suggestion. God is not advising us, hoping that uh, that we'll participate in this. It is a clear command from the Lord, and there are consequences that will be uh, 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 be. Uh, fulfilled in our lives, either good or bad, whether we decide to participate or cooperate in the kingdom. Uh, there's a very funny, and I don't, I don't have any uh, uh, clever or funny anecdotes today, but there's a tonight for this particular sermon. But there are a number of, uh, there's a song, and it talks about those who will be participators and spectators and though all of those things that go on. God never called any of us in the kingdom of God to simply sit by or sit back and watch other people labor in the kingdom of God. We have a job to do. So tonight let me read the scriptures and then we'll, we'll, we'll preach for a little while as the Lord will help us. Then the Bible said in verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you for you from the foundation of the world. He said, For I was an hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Excuse me. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when shall when saw we uh, the hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when shall, uh, or when saw we thee sick, or I'm sorry, in prison and came unto thee? I can't read this little print without my Bible. I mean, without my glasses. Then the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Verse 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 42, for I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat, and I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered or a thirst or a strange or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And then shall these shall go away into everlasting punishment. 
but the righteous into life eternal. I don't know about you, but every time I hear about eternal life, it makes me happy to know that the Lord has procured or has provided for you and I uh, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a good place to say amen. Now, I want to say to begin with that we need to hold ourselves accountable. Do you understand that? We need to hold ourselves accountable. We need to be accountable one to another. We need to have accountability uh, uh, to those that are over us in the Lord, to those that we worship with and, and communicate with and labor with in the Lord. And these things are important because left to ourselves, uh, as I believe brother, when Brother Denny was talking about the mind, uh, that we can convince ourselves a lot of time that we're doing the right thing when we're not having anybody to keep us accountable, when we're not hearing from the Lord. But I hear the Lord say, Go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel. The clarion call unto the last day church, or the, unto the church of the living God, is that you and I have a burden to bear. You and I have a job to do, a mission to complete. Amen. Oh, I've come by to tell somebody tonight, Amen. My purpose is not. Not to make you feel guilty. That is not simply not what I'm here uh, to preach about, but simply that you would respond to the reality of God's grace moving in your life. How many of you know that God's grace is truly moving in your life? And we need to respond to this. God is molding us. And it's through His Spirit in the faith that we walk in, that we live, and we talk about, amen, and that through all of that, that God is moving, and the reality of His grace through, through us by His Spirit, and that is to reach other people. That God, God is doing this. There, there is a reason that God is working. I love that song that we sing, Waymaker, He's, where it talks about He's always working. God is always doing something. And it's up to you and I to figure out what God is doing in our world, in our community, in our church, in our home, and in our own selves. Would you say, man, we're simply not here tonight to come in to feel a little bit of His presence and to, and to thank God for the opportunity to be here. And that is part of it. But it goes so much deeper to the people of God to realize that, that God, the great God of heaven, is constantly moving behind the scenes, touching lives and wooing people. Amen. I know this morning that God was indeed touching hearts. What a beautiful move of His Spirit. What a beautiful outpouring of God's love and, of, and the people responding in, in worship and adoration to the King of glory. Praise God. But oh, what a wonderful time it was. But in that midst of what God was doing and blessing and touching us, and we're rejoicing, there was somebody here I'm sure of that was feeling a tug on their heart, a reason, amen, to be stirred and to say something, God, something has got to change in my life. And aren't you glad tonight that that stirring and that moving that was on you one night or one morning, amen, and you responded to that clarion call of grace. God is working. Come on and say amen. God is working somewhere, somehow. He never stops. He never stops. God is indeed working. He's working now in our midst. God is working amongst us even now. God's, God's, uh, His presence, His, His Shekinah glory, His heavy presence in what God is doing. God never does anything by chance. God never does anything by happenstance. There is purpose, and that's what I'm always reminded of. It's simply not to come to church because of religious tradition or it's what we do. There is an opportunity for us tonight to partner together, to cooperate in the Spirit of God in what He is doing in this last day. Would somebody say, man, God is working, and we cooperate. That's how He works. Read the blessed Bible, church of the living God. Look at all throughout the history of the word of God. And you see God calling men and women and young people into the in, in two things. And God, how that God is used. I think about the young Samuel when God called him. And he didn't even know it was God speaking. He thought it uh, was Eli the priest. And finally Eli told him, said, look, the next time you just tell God that you're ready to hear what he's got to say. Oh, I think about the way that God. 
God used a wayward man, a, a hard-headed man like Samson, continually to move behind the scenes to put him into places where he could deliver God's people. Oh, I look at places where Elijah on Mount Carmel where God was using him to call a backslidden nation back to the true worship of great God Jehovah and he would call fire down from heaven. Oh, we could go on and on as we speak of the major and minor prophets throughout the Old Testament. God was always moving and working, amen, looking a man or a woman that would say like Isaiah, here I am, God, send me somebody say amen. God is working and we cooperate with God in his mission on earth. And God is speaking to every one of us tonight. And I don't, it's not because I'm preaching, but I believe God will use, use the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word through a song, through a worship time in our quiet time. Oh, and I, you know, Brother, Brother Denny, you were speaking to my heart so clearly. God will get a hold of, our, get a hold of us. God will get it. You, you can't keep going in neutral. You can't keep just floating around and hoping you'll make it to the right. Ra- God uh, allows something to shake us as a church, as a people, as an individual to get our attention, amen, and saying, I'm ready to move in your life. I'm ready to use you. I need you to cooperate in the, in the moving of what I'm doing in the spirit and reaching lost and dying people. Say, not another message, preacher, on lost folks. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, come on here, church. We are cooperating with God. God is working. We join God in his mission on planet Earth. You know, I I used to want to be an astronaut vaguely, you know, briefly. You know, as a young boy, we were all, those of us are old enough to remember, we were all enthralled uh, by the sight of the astronauts jumping on Apollo, whichever number it was, the moon shot when they sent man, and man first stepped on the moon, and what a, what a, uh, what, uh, how it inspired a nation. Remember, many of you remember that. We were kind of in a rush, uh, a, a war, a, a race, if you will, with the Russians or the Soviet Union to put a man on the moon, and it was with great pride in America, uh, the American. American astronaut planted that flag on on the moon. But let me tell you something tonight, amen. I'm not looking to fly to the moon, amen. My mission is go, it goes beyond the stars. It goes beyond the heavens. It goes beyond the universe, amen. There's a God that sits upon the throne of heavens, amen. And he's called you and I, amen, to cooperate with him in this great mission that we have. So in this context tonight that I'm preaching on, I ask you a question. Does God want us to work with him to reach people in this community? He does. And my heart breaks, amen. Thank God. And I think about the history, and I love the history of this church, and I love learning about it and hearing the stories. But I can tell you God didn't put us here to rest upon our laurels. God didn't place us, this church, in this position that we find ourselves positioned right here in this last day. Come on now. God didn't place the anointing that's upon this church as a whole. Uh, uh, and God did not place the anointing that he's placed on the music and the, and the singing and the worship and the preaching and the teaching. All that goes on, there is a purpose behind it. And I believe that God did this in order to put a people for here for such a time as this to reach a community, amen, and to say that Jesus saved and there is hope for a lost and a dying world. Do you believe that? It is hard to preach this kind of message, church, because we've heard it all our lives, amen, but understand behind the scenes there is a God in the universe that is worship, that is working and looking for you and I to cooperate in this mission. I'll ask you another question. Are you loving others? Are you loving others? Now, why it's easy to love folks that look like me. It's easy to love people that act like us. That even believe I'm trying to get us to stretch out, amen. To find those people, amen, that God remember now, you can't save anybody, but God's working. You can't deliver anybody, but God is working. 
You can't pull anybody out of the miry pit, but there is a God that has said, if I can get a hold of somebody, I'll show you that I can pull somebody out of a miry pit. I'll show you that I, that I can deliver that one, amen. I can save him that is to or her that is to the uttermost. I'm looking for somebody to cooperate because I'm working, God says. By loving others. It's easy to get wrapped up in our own lives. It is. We've all done If we would be honest, we've all done it. Because it seems like the enemy or the flesh or the devil or circumstances will at some point along the way or a combination of them all will somehow keep us wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up, the world. Sister Christy ain't going to sing it tonight, I don't guess. But I like it when she sings, I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Come on, somebody, lift a hand and say amen. I want my life to count for something, church. I want my time on planet earth to amount to something, amen, and not to be recognized by man, amen, but the heavenly Father to look down and hear these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. I ask you another conversation, question. Am I having faith conversations with others? Oh, I'm Brother Kenny, mean you talk shop, preaching and teaching and gospel and Worship, and we do, and we should, and we interact with one another, and, we, and iron sharpeneth iron, the Bible said, and it's, it's always great to get together with the people of God and to fellowship, but I'm telling you, it's time to stretch ourselves and start having some faith conversations with people that don't believe like we believe, that don't act like we act. I'm not saying go into the honky-tonks or the bars or this, or, I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, remember now, God is working. God is moving, amen. And if he could just find somebody to cooperate with him, he would place people in your path and in my path, amen, that I can have a faith conversation with. Let's go to Romans. we got to get a burden like this man. Greatest apostle ever lived in the sense of his scope of his ministry and writing two-thirds of the New Testament and one of the most quoted authors in the Word of God. Everybody, we all know Apostle Paul's life. There's many others. There's other great. Jesus himself, the greatest prophet, was John the Baptist. But in that context of, of, of influence, we most scholars consider this man to, uh, and his uh, treatise, uh, and especially in the book of Romans, is just, uh, just amazing. It, you know what I'm talking about. Just a great man of God. Now, I said all that to say this. He said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. He said, my conscience, listen, also bearing, this is serious business what he's saying here, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. You get that? That I have great heaviness and continue, don't go yet, leave it right here, and continual sorrow in my heart. Now, he, he set this thing up. He said, I'm not lying by the help of God. And my, my, my conscience is bearing witness with the Holy Ghost here. You, you follow. So he's writing these words. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So he's pinning these words as the Spirit is moving upon him. And he's here now and he's saying, I'm so heavy. I've got such sorrow. What has brought and got Saul to such, Paul, I'm sorry, to such a situation where he's in deep sorrow and deep heaviness? Verse 3, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. Oh, wait a minute here. Accursed, literally damned? Set, uh, literally uh, uh, anathema? He said, this is, he said, for I wish that I was accursed from Christ. He's saying, I'm so heavy and so sorrowful in my heart. He said, for my brethren, these Jews, 
that don't believe. They've, they've not seen Christ Jesus like I've seen him on the road to Damascus. My, my eyes, the scales falling off my eye. They've not experienced that wonderful Savior. They've not experienced a wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost. That I've got this sorrow, this deep heaviness in my heart. Oh, that I would be accursed. Why would he say that, church? Why would a man, a great man of God say, oh, if I could just be accursed so that I could win my brethren. Where is that kind of passion for people? of us, my, I guess myself included, I'm not throwing stone. Remember now, this is not to make anyone feel guilty. This is not to make us feel bad. But a lot of people sometimes, they just want to be saved enough to make it to heaven. If I can just hold on. One of my favorite preachers was a little, little Jewish man, Frederick Smith. He said, he told us one night, he said, many of you, he said, oh, you're going to be saved by the skin of your teeth. He said, and he said, I would encourage you not to brush your teeth. And I thought to myself, I know he was, you know, being whatever, but I thought about it. And in that sense, many of us really simply, all we do is barely make it from one day to the next. Come on, people of God, saints of God, let's get rooted. Let's get grounded. Let's get mature in Christ. Let's get full of the Spirit, amen, so that we could cooperate one more time, amen, with what King Jesus is doing on planet earth. So Paul's sorrowful. I wish that I could be accursed. I'm heavy. Why? For my brethren. That's, that's, that's strong words, people. Maybe it's not. Maybe you need to, maybe, maybe you need to hear that again. Paul said, I literally would want, I, I wish that I would be accursed from Christ for my kinsmen. For my brethren. I'm praying tonight that God would do something supernatural in this building tonight. Supernatural. Do I want to see God heal? Yes, I do. Woo! We've seen it. Would I love to see somebody come to this hall as far as I know everybody here is saved? But if they're not, there'll be someone here tonight. Would I love to see somebody come down? And, and give their heart to God. Would I love to see somebody come and say, Brother Bateman, I want to get closer to God. I want to be sanctified, and God would sanctify them. Would I love to see somebody get the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue? Absolutely, yes, and yes, and yes. But, oh, I would love to see God do something miraculous in the hearts of every one of us here tonight and would give us a burden for lost souls like we have never had. Somebody lift your hand and say, Help me, God, tonight. Oh, God, help me, Lord. You're working and you're moving. Let me cooperate in the Spirit with you, God. Now, another question. What's God doing in your world? Uh, hmm. What's God doing in your world? Oh, wait, 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 wait preacher, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here tonight. Me too. You came this morning. I did too. I paid my tithes. I did too. I sang. I worshiped. I did yes. Thank you for all of that. Bless God. And we need to do all those things that are important. But it, you, that's not what I'm asking you. What's God doing in your world? If I come to your house and knocked on your door and said, right, let's, let's, let's talk. Write down what God is doing in your life. How is he moving? How is he using you? What ways are you cooperating in the kingdom? I'm just trying to get you to think, not to feel guilty. Remember now that it's not, this is not to make us feel guilty, but to respond to the reality of God's grace molding us through His Spirit, through faith, that we might reach others. That's what I'm preaching about tonight. Not another message on soul winning. Not another message on compassion for the lost. But what is God doing in our lives? Who are we reaching and who are we touching? You've got so much to offer. What is God doing in my world? Do I invite others to join me? You know, I, I, I was challenged a couple of weeks ago in something I was reading. Now, I love to eat. Everybody loves to eat. But we eat with folks pretty much like-minded with us, don't we, all the time. You know, one of the best ways 
one of the best ways. I, I, I'll tell people, I'll tell my wife sometimes, well, let's just have them folks over. Well, no, 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 they can't come over now. The house ain't clean. But I'm telling you something, it's not dirty, it's just, you know. But one of the greatest ways to minister to people is to sit down and have a meal with them. It really is. And to break bread together, it's a wonderful way to get to know people. It's, it's a way to get closer to people. And you say, well, I, I'll meet you at the Mexican restaurant. And that's not what I'm talking about. No, no, I'd rather go, if I'm going to talk and meet with a sinner or, or, or meet with somebody that the Lord is moving in their lives and he's just looking for me to cooperate with God in his spirit to help reach that person for him. I, I'd, I'd just soon sit on the hood of the car with a Bill's hot dog and just begin to talk about faith issues. Come on now. Do we invite others to join us? People, this thing is bigger than us and our families. And our, as, you, as you can tell, I, I, I have prayed and I have prayed and I said, God, now I've got a, I've got a compassion for the Lord. Being, being a Christian, you automatically have a passion for lost people. Whether, you, whether it's manifested, whether it's vibrant or if it's dormant, but you've got one because you realize when you got saved, what God saved you from. One of my first thoughts after rejoicing about being saved was, oh, God, I was so close to dying and going to hell. Oh, my goodness, church, did you hear me? I realized, oh, God, what an, oh, how foolish I was to resist you all of these years. And I realized what a wonderful, wonderful thing it is to be saved. Do I invite others to join with me in what God is doing? I'm telling you, God is ready to start allowing this church to see people come to the Lord in numbers. Come on now. Oh, well, they might get my seat. Well, they might take your place. They might take your job. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Because look around. I mean, there was a few young people, but look around. Most of us are gray-headed. Dear God, God sent some people. God is working, but he's looking for cooperation in the kingdom. He's looking for something radical, something different. Brother, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I know you don't, you're not going to like what I'm going to, you're not going to like me doing this. And sister, brother and sister Denny, they're not, they didn't ask me. They would never ask me. And I'm sure he's probably going to say, I wish he wouldn't do this. I'm going to do it anyway. I go by the waterfront on Sunday. And him and Sister Denny are out there. He's got a guitar. And they've got some fly, um, some tracks. And they're sharing the gospel with people. That's radical, y'all. It really is. And I know they don't want any recognition. But I thank God for your ministry, y'all's ministry. I thank God for what you're doing. Because you know what? There might, they, they might not see any fruit of it right away. But God's working with them because they're cooperating with God. Come on, say, I'm not lifting. Come on here. We've got to look beyond outside of the box. Come on here. Heaven above, they'll use the water front for every other thing. Smoke on the water. Some Holy Ghost fire on the water. Woo! A couple more questions. Does our heart break at the thought of others going to hell? Are we equipped to do this? I can tell you right now, I, I don't think you can ever get to a point, I don't guess, because we're always, always can, there's room to grow for all of us. But I'm telling you right now, if we'll trust the Spirit. Oh, I, you know, I can go back real quick, real quickly here tonight. I can go back and remember God using people, putting people in my path. 
when I was when I had left the church as a as an older teenager, everywhere I went, I always run into somebody that the Spirit was in cooperation with. I didn't realize that then. I go somewhere and somebody would witness to me. I told you the story. I went to to a store and the, the the man come out and put himself right between my door and the driver's seat, and he kneels down right beside me with tears in his eyes and all I could think was help me get away from this guy help but with tears in his eyes cooperating in the kingdom with the Holy Ghost of God and God was moving and working God was touching my heart I was cold and I was indifferent and I was running and in a backslidden state but thanks be unto God for people that will say here I am Lord I'm ready to cooperate here Seek out opportunities to be used by God. Seek them out. Get off the phone. Turn the television off. Get outside of your comfort zone and do something for God. My prayers, I wrote these last few statements. Lord, give us a longing. See, I think I realize what's happened. People, they don't tarry in the presence of the Lord like they used to. They really don't. You know, we don't, we, we don't fill these altars and cry out for the Lord. And that's what we're going to do in just a few minutes. We're going to fill these altars. You can pray where you're at, but I'm going to ask most everybody that can and would come to these altars in just a few minutes. And let's pray God give us a longing. A longing for lost people. Come on and say amen. A passion. Be passionate about it. When I close last Sunday night, the Lord moved powerfully. His spirit moved. And I close with this story, and I'm going to close with it again. D.L. Moody was one of the greatest preachers of his era, and he was well known for leading people to the Lord. And when he was at a, in another city somewhere having a great crusade and souls were being saved, he was in his motel room standing on his lobby with another man, a friend of his, and his friend asked him, Brother Moody, what is your secret? to leading so many people to God. And D.O. Moody told him, look out in the street and tell me what you see. And the man responded, I see a crowded street. D.O. Moody said again, look again the second time. And the man said, well, I see men and women and boys and girls crowded together. D.O. Moody said, no, look again the third time. And now this man is frustrated. And he's, he's, he's what do you want me to see? And Brother Moody said, I see people going to hell without Jesus. And I'm going to give you the direct quote that he, this man wrote. Until you see people like that, you will not lead them to Christ. Sister Ellen, if you'll come to the piano, if everybody else would stand. I want you to bow your heads. I want us to meditate on what God is speaking to our hearts right now. God is speaking to our hearts, our minds. How many more folks are we going to How many more people are we going to let slip through our fingers because we won't cooperate with what God is doing? Because of our inactivity. I, I, again, this is not a remember now. It's not a message to make us feel bad. I, it's not my intention. It's not my motivation. It's simply to help us to realize to understand the reality of God's grace, His His working, His moving, and our cooperation. The holidays are coming up, people. The holidays are coming up. There'll be God's going to send unsaved people right to your front door, or either He's going to put you in the homes of unsaved people. 
I'm not even asking you to go to the waterfront. I'm not asking you to go downtown. I'm not asking you to, to go door to door. Oh, that's great. That's not what I'm asking right now. Why don't you start right there with that harvest field, right there in your own home, and start a faith conversation? Why don't you pray about it before you even go? Say, God, I'm going to be, that house is going to be full. Maybe if it's like yours, most everybody there will be saved, but there's always one or two there. You might have a, all your kinfolk might be lost. Pray. Say, God, now you, I heard that preacher the other night. He said you were moving. You're always working. Now, God, I want to align myself with what you're doing tonight, today, and tomorrow. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in lockstep. And I'm going to I'm gonna declare that I'm going to cooperate with you, Lord. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. didn't say it's a job for the preachers, the teachers, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists. No. It's that great commission to all of us. Remember all what I said, and we're going to pray. I said, God, I'm, I'm looking for you to do something miraculous tonight. Something miraculous in the hearts of in the lives of people. Stir us to become one of those that will cooperate in the kingdom of God with the God of heaven. Would you feel these altars tonight? Come on, all that would. Let's have a season of prayer. We, we would be remiss tonight. Let's feel these altars.